Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and today we're going to talk about some more book community, of course. I want to preface this video by saying that there may be a topic that comes up that I get a little passionate about. I'm going to try to control myself and just stick to the facts and receipts that I have. But if there is an outburst, I'm sorry, okay? I'm going to try to keep it in line though. Got a few things to go over and as I did last time, I'm just really going to try to um, give a brief overview, show any receipts and then keep it pushing. And if you want to do a deeper dive, I hope this gives you a foundation and then you can go search online or on Twitter or whatever and do your own research, but I'm gonna get started. Okay, first thing is, I think it was last week, it was announced or I saw it on Twitter that Penguin UK was releasing another special edition of The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. This is The Starless Sea. This is the UK Waterstones edition. It is very beautiful, but it is not signed or numbered, which is a new popular thing to do today. So the Penguin edition comes with like a slip cover and it looks like this, but I think the end pages are different and it is also numbered and signed. So there are only 100 copies. I'm pretty sure they're already sold out. And like I said, signed by Erin Morgenstern. This is her second book. I haven't read it. I've heard mixed reviews about it. But the reason this is tea is because the cost of the book is 300 pounds. Now I've done the math for you. That is 335 euros and 14 cents or $399.25 for a book that is I mean I guess if you love the book you get to have this rare edition um, but I'll insert the website here so I'm on the penguin website and here is the deluxe edition of the starless sea and I guess the only difference is the slip cover and that it's signed and numbered and there's only 100 but other than that, I'm pretty sure this looks exactly the same as the uh, Waterstones edition. And it just added a slip cover and numbered and signed. Which is not worth 300 pounds. That is bonkers to me. No sirree, Bob. Yeah, I mean, this was already expensive enough because you know, ordering from the UK, the conversion rate from pounds to dollars, the shipping, Good enough for me. Even if I read this book and it becomes one of my favorite of all time, I'm not paying 400 doll hairs for a book. There were some really funny tweets about it. And um, at first I was like, you know, thinking it was somebody put an ARC up for sale for $400 or something, but I, I was shocked. Okay? Okay. <laughs> so, Cassandra Clare, author of The Mortal Instruments, the Infernal Devices, all the Shadowhunter books. She had a ARC giveaway the other week for Lost Book of the White, a book it says that she did with Wesley Chu. And there were five winners. And so one of the people who received one of the ARCs unfortunately scanned every single page online and had their friend translate it. I, I feel like it was a Spanish copy because she does mention notifying her Spanish publisher. And so that sadly, is probably is going to affect further giveaways she said that i'm saddened as well because this likely means the end of fan giveaways so of course always that one that one asshole who has to ruin it for other people and there were some other tweets that i'll put here where people were saying like this one help why are people so mad over a dodgy rich author with an incest kink getting her 3,719 3, book leaked early to like five people when everyone would have read the EPUB next month. I think that's what it means. E anyway, and someone else posted like a video and it said Cassie when she found out she won't earn any money because arts are getting leaked. And so I know there are issues with Cassandra Clare with, I read the first three books in the Mortal Instruments. I did not like the incest plot line, but still. She doesn't deserve for her, her books that she gave away for free to be scanned online for people to read. So that's just how I feel about that. Then we've got Mackenzie Lee, who is the author of The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, I believe is a YA novel. I haven't read it. I think the main character is a bisexual male and Mackenzie Lee is a woman. 
And um, so there is a conversation more recently about women writing stories about queer males. I'm not gonna get into that. Anyway, she apparently is writing a new book that's being released by Disney called Gamora and Nebula and people are not happy. A few months ago, she was working in a bookstore. I don't know if she still does. And she was signing books and sending them off to uh, customers. So that doesn't sound so bad, except that the books weren't hers. They were not the books that she wrote. So she was taking books that customers had ordered from other authors and signing, sometimes drawing a doodle in them and sending them off to paying customers. Hi, editing Jessica here. So I wanted to correct something I said. Mackenzie Lee, I went back to Twitter and apparently people requested that she write in these books and the bookstore uh, replied to tweets saying that this was okay because people requested these that she write in these books, but there were tweets by other some of the authors whose books she wrote in or signed tweeted their feelings, especially authors of color, like they weren't okay with that. And one of the, the bookstore's replies was, did Tolstoy say something? And so, yeah, just was a messy situation. If I was an author, I wouldn't want someone else signing my book either. So I just wanted to correct that. So I think she deleted her Twitter and hasn't been on there since. So yeah, she was canceled, but then not really because obviously she's writing this new novel, so. Mm, about that. All right, then we've got a book that I thought was not out yet, but Goodreads says that it was published on August 10th and it is called The Stars and Stripes Between Us by Audrey Rivero. And here is the tagline. He's a liberal, she's a conservative. What could go wrong? <laughs> I'm gonna read the Goodreads blurb. He's a liberal, she's a conservative, what could go wrong? When progressive bisexual MIT junior Nathan Campbell meets Marina Salinas on the hockey rink, he's immediately smitten. She's gorgeous, smart, funny, competitive. There's just one problem, she's a Republican. Unable to resist each other, Nate and Marina begin to date in secret, sneaking around Boston to explore what they both know is a really bad idea. But beyond the bubble of their growing affection, tensions on the campus are rising. When Nate's roommate tries to get Marina's friend expelled for hate speech, they'll both be forced to pick sides. Can their spark survive the storms of political division? Or will they, like so many others, be able to overcome the things between them? I hadn't heard anything about this book and then I saw saw it on Twitter. It, Like I said, it says published August 10th, 2020. And there are five ratings. It has a 1.6 and it sounds terrible. That premise, no thank you. That's all I'm gonna say on that. Keep it pushing. Okay, the next one is another book, but this one doesn't come out until January, 2021 and it's called The Duke's Princess Bride. So at first I was very confused about what was going on in Romance Landia. There were a lot of subtweets about this book, uh, basically glorifying colonizers. And then I saw things about author of color, white reviewer. I was just so confused. So if I, uh, I apologize if I've understood this incorrectly and someone correct me in the comments, but this book is written by Emily Howard, who is an author of color. And the book has a main character who is an Indian woman. And the male, you know, love interest is a white British dude. But this is set in like the late 1800s. So like English imperial rule kind of thing. And he's basically like white savior, white dude come to save the day, I think. I'm gonna read you a blurb from someone's review so you can have a better idea because I can't explain it as well. The issue apparently is because the author is an author of color, the first big review that came out, I don't know if it was the author herself or someone else, was written by a white woman. And so the conversation was, do you as a white woman have a place to critique um, these problems in a book written by an author of color? And then other reviewers came forward who were like, also like this, I'm an own voices reviewer. and that's whose review I found on Goodreads who linked to the white woman's review. I don't want to call her. I mean, her name is Vicki Hoyle. That is the lady who wrote the review. So the own voices reviewer basically shouted out to her review and is saying, yes, these things are problematic. And so I'm just going to read you a blurb from Vicki's review. 
She said, there is a powerful anti-racist historical romance to be written about an Indian heroine set against the backdrop of 1860, 1860s imperialism, but The Duke's Princess Bride by Amy Lee Howard is not it. Although it is an own voices story by an author of color which aims to unpack racism and colorism, it is underpinned by a colonialist logic that's colonialist logic that suggests a problematic lack of reflection about the power relations at the heart of its story. Some of what I'm going to describe in this review amounts, in my opinion, to a kind of epistemic violence in that the book obscures or erases the oppression, exploitation, torture, and murder of Indian peoples under British rule, both in India and elsewhere in the empire. And it keeps going. So, yeah. there's So now there's this conversation. One, I'm assuming the author said something, but again, I can't find the, like, I can't find the original source. So if somebody could let me know, please let me know. But so there's the conversation of a white reviewer critiquing a book by an author of color. There's a conversation of how authors of color should tackle problematic topics in their book. And then obviously authors versus bloggers and reviewers. It's a mess. There's, I still honestly don't understand all of that's going on, but I just know from that, that this book sounds a bit messy and um I mean it wasn't on my radar anyway so it's not like I'm gonna read it but mm, I, there has to be more often than not authors of color are held to this like higher standard than like a white author sometimes but sometimes which it sounds like in this case the critique is valid I'm not good at, at saying things words so i'm gonna leave it at that anyway i'm gonna link both of these reviews in the description so you can read them if you would like and get a better idea of the story and how they felt about it but that was just kind of a really surface level summarization something else i saw just on twitter today is a new book that is supposed to be released it says not till 2022 but it's called dancing with fire by jordan marie green and the one of those like blurbs like we've acquired this book so it's emily settle at fywell and friends has brought has bought jordan marie green's debut ya rom-com dancing with fire in which a 16 year old girl dreams of trading in her hula skirt for a pair of fire knives chronicling the obstacles she faces breaking into the male dominated sport including winning over the director by playing tour guide to his spoiled teenage son publication is scheduled for winter 2022 and it is a white lady that is reading the book and the tweet I saw um, said at first glance I'm sure this looks like a harmless Hawaii romance but Hawaii isn't just a location and hula isn't just a kind of dancing despite its ubiquity and in tourist entertainment so it said I can't find anywhere that this author is Kanaka I'm probably saying that wrong I apologize though she says she lived in Hawaii so that Someone else quote tweeted this and said this shit here is not okay reading the description of this book and the author's tweets about her characters and story just made me flush with anger. I'm shaking with it. Um, so doesn't look like a good look. That will be interesting to see if that does make it to publication. Okay, so someone on Twitter tagged me in this and at the end because people will send me things and I will I'm gonna list basically credits to people who sent me links but so there is Alfonso Dunn who's an artist and he made a book um one's called pen and ink drawing workbook to kind of show you how to draw basically I hope that's not trivializing it but he is a black man who was a chemistry treat chemistry teacher he quit his job to finish this book which took him a lot of time a lot of work and so then there's Jake Parker or Jacob Parker who is the so-called creator of Inktober which I've seen go around on Instagram every year and I guess he's trying to trademark it even though I think it's kind of a community created thing and so the tweet was Jake Parker plagiarized my book because Alfonso published a, or uploaded a YouTube video about this and he goes through in the video and talks about you know how long it took him to do the book and then he went online he saw this book up for pre-order got excited kind of looked through it or what was posted and said that it looks very like the exact same of his book and so he is saying that Jake Parker plagiarized his book like 
I won't say word for word because it's drawings, but there are words. But I mean, what he did show does look eerily similar or basically the same. I did go to Jake Parker's Instagram and he has up a statement saying that he didn't and that he's upset that Alfonso took it public instead of contacting him privately. So I don't know, but I will put Alfonso's video down in the caption. It is long, but he goes through all these different things. Obviously, I don't know, but it looks suspect and I just wanted to make you aware. Okay, whew, goodness. The bookish community just always got something popping. We've got Lit Joy Crate. Is it Lit Joy Crate? They are a large book subscription box company. So I, I've never got a box from them, but I think they do monthly boxes. And so, so I'm on Lit Joy Crate's website. Like I said, they're a subscription box company. And so recently, a few months ago, they were under fire because they had Dreamcatchers in their box. And I think they released a statement. I don't think it was really an apology. It was kind of like a statement uh, because it's obviously cult cultural appropriation. So then things died down somewhat. So this month they posted that they were holding a rep search and in conjunction with that, with a Harry Potter related box. So obviously most of you know about JK Rowling's transphobic tweets. And so multiple companies had made statements that they were no longer going to sell Harry Potter merchandise or have Harry Potter merchandise in their subscription boxes. But LitJoy is not one of those. And so that box is very Harry Potter centered. And now I'm on their website and they've got a whole subscription. So they've got LitJoy Magical Subscription a new subscription box from LitJoy. Um, so let's see, they're quarterly boxes and each one has a magical theme. So then I scroll down and October's is Diagon Alley. Then January is The Burrow and April they have The Big Seven and they've got Magical Classes, Fantastic Beasts. So they're all directly Harry Potter related. They're not just fantastical or, or magical, they're all Harry Potter related boxes. And so, of course, people have been outraged that they still continue to um, support J.K. Rowling after what she said. So they put out a Instagram post that conveniently had the comments turned off and said, you know, these are not directly licensed merchandise, which way to call yourself out online. And um, so the money's not going to her, that they stand with their with the trans community and um, you know, they're not trying to hurt anyone. They just want to keep the magic alive, but people are not here for it. But there are people that are, and that is why I don't think that they're going to change their behavior because as long as a company is getting money and thriving, the people are going to continue to support it. Like, or I mean, they're going to continue to do what they do because they're like, well, we're not seeing any negative effects. Like they may lose some subscriptions here and there, but I mean, there are a lot of people who are happy under those posts who are like, yeah, I'm excited to get this. And I mean, they have these boxes planned through next October for this magical subscription. I didn't even know that until I went to this website. I just knew they had that one box that they included in their rep search post. So, hi yay yay. Um, this just brings up the conversation of can you separate the art from the artist? No, um, I don't know. But there it is on the website. Magical subscription. Who knows, Lord? Last but not least is uh, Sweet Sequels. So a lot of people already know about this, so I don't know if this is that shocking to anyone, but Sweet Sequels is a bookish merchandise shop run by Haley. Um, she has an Instagram page and then her shop. I don't know what that's through, but I used to follow her years ago and then saw the, like, um, anti-abortion rhetoric she was sharing and I unfollowed but people still follow her as of yesterday she had 18,000 followers since you know June when George Floyd was murdered and all the riots and things have started I have seen people share her page a few times because of her nonsense so she is a Christian, like uber Christian, fundamentalist, whatever you want to call it, and anti-abortion, obviously, so anti-Planned Parenthood, very right-wing conservative. And so she'll sometimes post her art 
and you know maybe just a bookish quote but then sometimes she posts it and with like a biblical scripture and then she gets into current events so something she posted a few months ago was um that you can't be you can't say black lives matter and be pro-abortion because what was it like 39 percent of babies that are aborted are black oh that's what she said um and this is when i said i'm trying hard to just give you the facts i'm just gonna I'm just going to rein it in. <clears throat> and other people were trying to tell her how harm harmful these things she was saying was. And that she needed to amplify, amplify other black voices instead of her own. And she said, I am amplifying black voices. And then she shared the black voices that she listens to. And they are people like Ben Carson and Candace Owens and the Hodge twins and Diamond and Silk. And do you see do you see a pattern here she also is like very anti mainstream media which fine media is has its issues and she said that I only follow unbiased media and she linked them all in this description and so of course I went and clicked on every single page including Ben Shapiro again do you see a theme and they all had the same all these pages whether it was black or a white person running them were all the same, very um, liberalism is communism, very anti-black. Um, yeah, they were all the same, but they're unbiased, you know, that's what she says. And so recently she posted again about abortions and, and bringing up Black Lives Matter and all of that. And people, of course, were commenting and because she's like, you know, not all cops are bad, which we fucking know. But so she, <laughs> I'll post her tweets. I mean, they're very long. You can go look on Instagram if you want. I, I mean, I don't recommend it. But um, so she was saying that while Brianna's Taylor, Brianna Taylor's death was a tragedy and an accident. You know, it really is her boyfriend's fault for opening up fire on the police officers, although they entered his home on a no-knock warrant and the warrant wasn't for them. Or aren't these same people always yay Second Amendment? I'm trying to, let me calm down, let me calm down. There was also on one of the pages that she calls unbiased news, their theory is that Breonna Taylor was no innocent woman, that you know she was involved in drugs or drug trafficking or something. And I just think it's, ironic that these same people who say the unborn babies who are aborted every year um can't speak for themselves well the pe black people being murdered can't speak for themselves either because they're no longer here no oh, i'm getting i'm getting so angry anyway so those are just some of the things that she says so i would just like to try and calmly say that if you are a white person and you don't believe that white privilege is a real thing and you listen to people like Candace Owens and Diamond and Silk and Ben Carson and whoever else, um, and you choose to listen to this small minority of black people who are black conservatives versus the black majority who are telling you that racism is real, that you do have a privilege, that they're killing us disproportionately, you have a problem. I, mm, I don't, Okay, I said, whew, I'm trying to calm down. So that is just some of the nonsense that C Sweet Sequels is about that she shares on her page. Some of it she shares on her art. Um, and so I just want you to be an informed consumer and know that this is how she feels and what she says online. And um, there's really no reasoning with her because she is firm in her belief and she's not gonna listen to any rational argument um, although you're not supposed to judge people, she's totally going to judge you. So I just want you to know if you came across her art, um, and you were going to buy it, maybe think twice, or maybe if you don't know if you're following her, go, maybe go look, because maybe you don't want to be supporting someone like that. Um, everyone can have their own thoughts, obviously. Religion is fine. I have no problem with religion. Everybody who practices their own religion do what you want to do. The problem with religion comes in where you use your religion to try to dictate how other people live. And that's where the problem is. And I feel like that's how Sweet Sequels is. Like, 
if you're not a Christian and you don't subscribe to these virtues and morals that I have, then you're wrong. And that's not her place. And so I, I choose not to support someone like that. And I hope that you think about who you're supporting as well with your dollars or even your energy. So that is that. Not going to say anything else. This is the second time I'm recording this because I got so heated earlier. I think those are all the major things that I saw this week. I probably missed something. Let me know in the comments. Um, if I miss anything, how you feel about any of these topics that I talked about today. And I hope you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I hope you subscribe. I hope you're taking care of yourself and staying hydrated and staying distant and um, doing something that brings you joy. But thank you for watching. I will link any information that I have, any video or blog post, anything in the description. And uh, I hope you have a good day. Bye. Augustus wants to say hi.